Hello there, my name is Oliver Degerstedt and today I'm going to talk to you about polymers and spores. Cheers! Let's go! Polymers are large molecules that consist of smaller repeating units by the name of monomers. Polymers are extremely important in today's society and today, or right now, I'm going to talk to you about three different sports and I'm going to show you exactly how polymers have affected these sports. and the elephant herds of Africa and India were quickly being decimated. The ivory from their tusks was, amongst other things, used to make billiard balls. A New York billiard ball manufacturer by the name of Phelan and Colander set up a competition offering $10,000 to whoever could create a substitute for ivory. The winners were John Wesley and Isaiah Hyatt. The two brothers refined the Englishman Alexander Parks' method of dissolving nitrated cellulose, i.e. nitrocellulose, in alcohol, ether, and camphor. Cellulose is the polymer of glucose and is mainly found in cotton. What the Hyatt brothers did was to nitrate the cellulose with nitric acid and then react this mixture with camphor. Camphor is a white, wax-like plasticizer extracted from the wood of the camphor laurel tree. This reaction forms a permanent hard solid at normal temperatures, for example room temperature, and a soft, malleable solid when heated. The product is now known as celluloid, the first ever synthetic plastic. There was, however, one problem. Ah yes, you see, the thing is that nitrocellulose is quite explosive because of all the nitrate groups attached to it. That is also why nitrocellulose was used as a replacement for gunpowder in the First World War, under the name of gun cotton. And believe it or not, celluloid is still used to this day in, for example, guitar picks or table tennis balls. Uh, you might want to keep that in mind the next time you feel like going for a casual game of ping pong. Something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I think it's time we stop children What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down So, as I'm sure that most of you are aware, this year the Olympics take place in London and one of the sports or events that I'm a little bit more interested in or excited about is uh, rowing. So that's why today we're here at the Henley Rowing Club in Henley and this is where the Royal Regatta takes place each year. And, uh, yeah, let's have a look inside, shall we? So, have you guys seen the movie The Social Network? Well, this is the boat. The boat right here was used by the Harvard University crew when they were filming the rowing scene in that movie. Pretty cool, right? Moving on, uh, here we have an example of a wooden boat. This is the material mostly used before polymers were invented to build the boats. Now, nowadays, it's mostly used to give a more of a aesthetic feeling to the boat. And. Uh, over here we have some blades that you use to row with. There's different types of blades and the ones we have right here are called sculling blades, which means that you hold them in one hand. 
so must we have two of them. And these plates right here are almost all of them made of 100% carbon fiber. And now we're going to have a closer look at carbon Carbon fiber and fiberglass are the two big names when it comes to making rowing equipment. They are both composite materials, which means that they are polymers reinforced with fibers. In this case, the fibers are carbon, in the form of graphite or glass. That's why they're so useful. Because of the fiber presence, the polymeric chains are stretched out straight and lined up next to each other. Hence, they form a very strong material. Yep. Alright, let's go. So, now we're back outside here and we're going to have a look at the pride of the UYBC. <laughs> UYBC being the University of York's book. This is our very own Wintech. Well, the Wintech is a cost for, which means that you got four rowers. Blades, you hold them in both hands, so one each. And we're going to talk a little bit about the yeah what this boat is made of, though. So we have some carbon fiber seats right here, aluminium riggers. The hull, which is the outside part of the boat, is uh, well first of all paint, <laughs> and then we have some uh, fiberglass here. That's the first layer. On the inside of the boat which is called the deck we have paint as well and then some carbon fiber the thing that binds together the hull and the deck is the epoxy I know that this might sound like a lot of fancy words and all but if you have a look at this diagram right here or this picture it will probably be explained a bit more what the handsome blonde guy was just blabbing about is this to put together the different layers of a hull and deck, a strong adhesive is used, the epoxy raisins. It is a type of superglue that comes in two parts. First of all, we have the diepoxy, a polymer with an epoxy group at each end. This is then reacted with a diamine. Now the exciting bit can begin. All the diepoxy and the diamines are linked together, but not in a linear way. Oh no, they cross-link with each other and they enhance their physical strength by covalently bonding to more than one chain. And as you can see right here, there's plenty of bonding going on all over this place. You see, that's the key. That's why epoxy raisins are such strong adhesives. Let's have a final look at that shell. One of the key facts to keep in mind here is that carbon fiber and fiberglass have one important difference. Carbon fiber is quite a lot lighter than fiberglass, which means that it is also more expensive. Because that's just what you want in your boat, isn't it? The highest strength to weight ratio possible. Unfortunately for the poor rowers of the UIBC, they'll just have to do what they can with a heavier boat. Cup in South Africa in 2010, there were a lot of complaints made on the official match ball used in that tournament. So that's why, in preparation of this year's European Cup, Adidas went all out on creating this bad boy, the Tango 12. Oh yeah, Adidas definitely brought their A game for this one. And as you can see here, this football has been tested in every single way possible. According to Adidas themselves, the Tango 12 is made out of 30% leather and 70% polyurethane. Polyurethane is a very well-known polymer. You might actually be sitting on some of it right now. That is, if you have padding on your seat. Polyurethane gets its name from the many urethane linkages in the polymer. So how do we make this compound? Well, if we mix a diisocyanate with a diol in what we call a step growth polymerization reaction, this is what we get. What you need to keep in mind here is that we're talking about a step growth polymer. So no chain reactions are involved, and mostly the polymer chains will be quite short. Experts say that this ball is supposed to be easier to control than its predecessor. Let's hope that they are right, and let's hope that Mr. Ibrahimovic brings back a nice little something on his way back from Kiev this summer. You see that bit over there?
Welcome back. This concludes today's video of Polymers and Sports. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Cheerio. Closing time. Open all the doors and let you out into the